Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Look at it. So all of them we honor, respect, and they are our role models. No Muslim could be a Muslim if we deny any single one of them. Their stories are mentioned in the Quran, their life history, their miracles. So each single Muslim are supposed to believe in them, uh, believe in that message, believe in their, uh, in their miracles. So any questions so far? Any questions so far? Yes, sir. Is there a of the original sin in uh, the Muslim faith? No, we don't have that concept, and I'm coming to it very fast, inshallah. These are the basic articles of faith. The very first one is to believe in the oneness of God, that God is one in one in his nature and in his person, not any other combination, okay? So that's very important. It says in chapter 112 of the Quran, Qul hu wallahu ahad. Say he's Allah, one and only. Second important belief, we believe in all the angels that God has created. Do you know the names of any angels, by the way? Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel Michael. Michael, and other angels, correct? We also believe in them. So we say that angels are not sons of God, they are a creation of God. They are like the robots of God, God programs them and they fulfill the obligation that God has given. So angel Gabriel, perfect. He is the angel that came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to uh, convey the very first revelation that God has sent uh, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Same angel came to Prophet uh, uh, Jesus and Moses and all the other prophets. We believe in, um, like I mentioned, all the prophets. Now, very important over here, we believe in all the divinely revealed books before the Quran also. Prophet Jesus was given a book in Arabic. What is the name of the book, Professor? Angel. Angel. Prophet Moses was given a book which is called as the Torah. Prophet David, he was given a book which is called as the Zabur. And Prophet Abraham, he was given book or scrolls. So we believe in all of those books in their original form. But the last book and the last testament which is given for humanity is the Quran. Okay? So uh, we say that Quran is the last book, the last guidance, and before Quran, other books came. So, one important aspect of the Quran, my dear friends, is that uh, God says in the Quran, uh, chapter 15, verse number 9, Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun. That it is God who has sent down this message, which is the Quran, and it is God who is going to protect it. Protect it from it getting lost, from it getting corrupted, edited, revised, you know, any, any kind of, you know, alteration. So we see that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he received the revelation, he used to memorize that revelation. So in his lifetime, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he memorized the whole Quran. So as you could see up here, Quran is not a small book, right? It has thousands of verses and hundreds of pages in there. And it is written in Arabic language. So one man memorized the whole book in his lifetime. That's a miracle. Second miracle is 200 of his companions, they memorized the whole Quran, from the first page to the last page. And that form of memorization continued from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his time, up until our time. So right now, in the world, guess how many memorizers of the whole Quran are alive? Let's take a shot, how many? 11 million Muslims memorized the whole Quran. Have you memorized the whole Quran? I'm in the process. I have memorized a chunk of it. So did the professors. So do my two friends up here. How many years does it usually take? Uh, between one to two years. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Is it a school you go to to help you with that? Or? Yeah, different mosques in the Chicago and around the world. They have mm -hmm. specialized uh, teachers who help the students memorize the Quran. So it's one of the miracles. Just imagine, you know, our one of the books of biology or math or anything. It will be very tough for us to memorize it. But imagine 11 million people memorizing the Quran in the original language, not just in English. Right? Uh, so that's one of the miracles. Now we believe, very important, number five, that this life is a very short life. We have to pass away one day. But that is not going to be the end of our existence as we know of. God is going to bring us back to life. There would be a day of resurrection and a day of judgment. You know, just like um, at our work, 
we have to be accountable on a quarterly or yearly basis. We have to stand in front of the boss and he'll be evaluating us. Based on our you know, assignment, we'll be getting a good grade or a bad grade. Same thing with the professor in the class, correct? Yeah. So this life, according to Islam, is a life of test and trial. God is testing us. He wants to see if you are going to be believers or are we going to be worshipping you know, the creation. Are we going to do good deeds as God wants us to or bad deeds? So based on how we live our life, what kind of belief that we held, God is either going to place some people into paradise, which is going to be forever, some other people into hellfire. So let's hope and pray that each single one of us be guided and be into paradise together, inshallah. Yes, brother, go ahead. Is uh, hell also forever, or is that, uh, you can work your way out of that? <laughs> like purgatory. <laughs> no, yeah, we don't have purgatory. Uh, hell is, both heaven and hell are forever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Question, any question on the hereafter? So in the hereafter, the judge on the day of judgment would not be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, according to Islam. It will not be Jesus, Moses, anybody for that matter. It will be the person, the entity who is all knowing, who is all seeing, who is all powerful, all mighty, all just. And the only entity like that is only the creator, only the creator. So he would be the judge on the day of judgment. And we also, last but not the least, we believe in the divine decree of God. In all things which are happening in the world, in the universe, it is by the will and the power of God. Okay, any questions on the six important uh, beliefs in Islam? Well, I just have a question relative yes. to, you know, they made fun of, us, of people with the 72 virgins and all that. Is mm -hmm. there any source to that, you know, when somebody dies? Well, okay. This is the Quran. In the Quran, there is no mention about 72 virgins. Oh. All right, this is the primary book, okay? Now, there is a reward for those people who do good deeds and uh, they die in the path of God. Suppose if a person is fighting a good fight, okay? okay? Suppose if somebody is trying to kill that person, if the person is you know, defending himself. If they are occupiers and the person is uh, you know, repelling evil in the society and in that repelling of evil, uh, if a person dies, so there would be a reward, and in the Quran it says that no eyes have seen or no mind could imagine what kind of reward that God is going to give it to us. But there is one statement that the best reward in the hereafter would be a spiritual reward. It's not going to be, because physical rewards, fine, you know, that's good and dandy, but the best reward would be the spiritual reward, peace and contentment, closeness to God. Right? So that's, yeah. In the last... Uh, belief in the divine decree, do you also uh, find uh, people having a difficulty with suffering and God's love? I mean, you're saying we live under the will of God, uh, and God knows all and is almighty. But then there's so much suffering in the world. True. And, uh, do, do people come to you and ask you to help them Resolve. With that, yes, with that yeah, that's yeah. So the question is, you know, what about all the suffering in the world? Maybe earthquakes, maybe tsunamis, maybe you know, what happened to uh, Haiti and all of that? Mm -hmm. Or past, uh, bypass shootings? Oh, no, yes, yeah, those two, yeah. those two, or people, you know, born handicapped and all of that. So yeah, so Islam does say that this life is a life of test and trial. Each single person would be tested in a different way. Some of us would be tested by our wealth by our children, by our resources. Maybe people in some other countries could be tested by earthquakes or hunger. So based on the test, and the person is going to be persevere, persevering, it says in chapter 2, one, uh, verse 155 of the Quran, that people would be tested by their wealth, by their resources, by their lives. And those people who are going to persevere in patience, there would be a good reward for that person. All right, so this is a challenge for life. Uh, you know, just like in college and uh, schools, uh, the tougher the test, the bigger the grade or the bigger the reward if the person passes it. So if a person to become a doctor, the, it's a very tough test. But once you get the degree, it's more valuable, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, if a person is loved by God, they would be tested more, you know, just like stories of the Old Testament, some of them. To Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. God told him to go and sacrifice your son. It's a big test. Mm 